So we're going to look at uh, the specific Doppler uh, uh, specific type of Dopplers uh, this evening. And we're going to start with pulse wave Doppler. So there are some characteristics of pulse wave Doppler that you, you have to know. Okay? So pulse wave Doppler measure low velocity. What happens is when you have your probe or your transducer, they, they, it, gonna, it sends out an impulse, it sends out a, 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 a sound wave, and then it does nothing and you wait for that, the reflection of that sound wave to come back. So when the sound wave travels to any structure, it impinges on that structure and bounces back towards the uh, transducer and you you get um, your 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 Doppler uh, signal. So it pulse pulse wave Doppler measures velocity of blood at a single point. The transducer sends out a signal and then it waits for that signal to be reflected backwards. Okay? And because it's doing this, it can only measure low velocity uh, movements. It, it, it can only measure low velocity. So the transducer or the probe itself is alternating between sending out signals and receiving the signal. So it alternates between the transmission and the reception of, of uh, ultrasound. Okay. Again, because it, it it's doing this, it's only it's sending out signal and waiting for the signal to come back. It can only measure low velocity signals. Okay, these are the different type of flows or movements or velocity that your pulse wave can measure. These are low velocity uh, signals. The mitral inflow. Remember. Blood travels from the left atrium across the mitral valve into the left ventricle. That's a normal flow of blood. That, the velocity of that movement, we use pulse wave to measure that. We call that the mitral inflow. The left ventricular outflow track velocity, that is blood moving from the left ventricle to the left ventricle outflow track across the aortic valve and into the aorta. The, that, Velocity, blood velocities, we use pulse wave Doppler to measure that as well. Hepatic vein flow. So blood flows from the hepatic vein into the, 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 the inferior vena cava. That blood flow velocity, we use pulse wave Doppler as well. Tissue Doppler imaging. So, and we'll explain that a little bit more, but if you look at the mitral annulus, in systole, the mitral annulus moves towards the apex, and in diastole, it moves downwards. So it's constantly moving up and down, up and down. We can measure that velocity, and that velocity gives us tremendous amount of information. So we call that tissue Doppler imaging. Pulmonary vein flow, again, we know that the pulmonary veins are going to take oxygenated blood from the lungs and it's going to empty those, that blood into the left atrium. We can measure that pulmonary vein flow and we use pulse wave Doppler to do that. Tricuspid inflow, similar to your mitral inflow. So blood moves, when blood enters the right atrium, via the inferior and superior vena cava. It flows from the right atrium across, across the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. We can measure that blood flow using pulse wave Doppler. So let's look at our mitral inflow. So this is the cursor. We have our, our apical four chamber view, two dimensional echo is on top. This is the cursor. The, sam the sample volume is right here. Remember, your transducer, this symbol represents where your transducer is. Okay? So, 
we press our pulse wave Doppler button, you know that blood is going to flow from the left atrium across the mitral valve and into the left ventricle in diastole, and the blood is flowing towards the transducer. Okay, so that is why in diastole you have your E velocity, then you have your A velocity. This is the mitral inflow. Mitral inflow. Okay, blood flowing from the left atrium across the mitral valve into the left ventricle is moving towards the transducer. And it's above, this is the baseline right here. The flow is above the baseline and it's in diastole. Your ECG is on top. Diastole is from the end of the T wave to the beginning of the QRS. Okay, this is your E velocity, your A velocity. Okay. Okay, so, so again, this is your transducer or your probe. Your cursor is right here. This is an apical five chamber view. Your the cursor is right there. The sample volume is right there. It's in the left ventricle outflow track. You press your CW button and you get an envelope, a spectral envelope right here. It's below the baseline and it's in systole. Systole is from the beginning of the QRS to the end of the T wave. So you get this periodic systolic flow. That is because blood flows from the left ventricle, across the left ventricle flow track, across the aortic valve into the aorta. So this is your LVOT uh, velocity, or LVOT envelope, left ventricle flow track envelope, okay? What about hepatic vein flow? We don't have the two-dimensional thing, but I'll show you um, later in the lecture. Remember the hepatic veins, the blood flow is gonna be towards or into the inferior vena cava, and the, the, your transducer is on top. The flow is away from the transducer. That is why it's below the baseline. Your ECG is on top. So you're gonna get a systolic flow and you're gonna get a diastolic flow and this is called the atrial reversal, hepatic vein flow. So in systole, you're gonna have blood flowing from the hepatic vein into the inferior vena cava. In diastole, you're gonna have blood flowing from the hepatic vein into the inferior vena cava. But when they atrium contracts, when the right atrium contracts, you're gonna get blood going in the opposite direction. That is why the atrial flow reversal is on top. You're gonna to get blood flow in the opposite direction towards the transducer. Remember, flow towards the transducer is gonna be above the baseline. Flow away from the transducer is gonna be below the baseline. This is what your, your tissue Doppler imaging looks like, okay? So, apical four chamber view, you have one sample value, one sample volume, and your medial mitral annulus, one on the lateral mitral annulus. When you press, so TDI is a form of pulse wave Doppler. When you, so again, remember in systole, the base moves up towards the apex. In diastole, it moves downwards. Your transducer is right here. So in systole, you get what we call your S prime because it's going to move upwards towards the transducer. So you're going to get an envelope above the baseline. In diastole, when it moves downwards away from the transducer, you're going to get two diastolic component. And this is what the first one is called an E prime, and this the second one is called an A prime. Okay? So this is your S prime telling you that your 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 medial mitral annulus is moving upwards towards the transducer, which is right there. And then in diastole, it moves downward. You have two diastolic components. The first one is your E prime, the second one is your A prime. Okay? So your ECG is on top. Systole, 
it moves upwards that's why it's above the baseline systole is from the onset of the qrs to the end of the t wave diastole is from the end of the t wave to the qrs okay and this is what it act this is what your pulmonary vein actually looks like so again remember what we're saying this rep represent the transducer apical four chamber view pulmonary vein is right there all you do, you press your PW button and you get these envelopes, your ECGs on top. So let's analyze what you have here. But if you remember, your pulmonary veins are gonna drain into the left atrium. So in systole, so we, we, you get a systole component, you get a diastole component, and you get an atrial flow reversal. In the normal, uh, individual, the systolic component is greater than the diastolic component. But so if you analyze what's happening, in systole, you have blood flowing from the pulmonary vein into the left atrium. In diastole, blood flowing from the pulmonary vein into the left atrium. But when the left atrium contracts, it's going to push blood in the opposite direction. So it's going to move away from the transducer. So blood moving away from the transducer is going to be below the baseline. So your atrial flow reversal is going to be below the baseline, whereas your systolic and your diastolic component is above the baseline because it represents blood flowing from the pulmonary vein into the left atrium towards the transducer. Tricuspid inflow. So your, cur your apical four chamber view, cursor is across the tricuspid valve, the sample volume is right there. This is, this is your, 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 your probe or transducer. We know that blood is gonna flow from the right atrium across the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. That's a normal flow. And that flow is gonna occur in diastole, okay? So in diastole, you have two envelopes, you have your E velocity, your A velocity, okay? And it's above the baseline, above the baseline because it's flow towards the transducer, right atrium, tricuspid valve, right ventricle, okay? Flow towards the transducer. Now, as we, me we mentioned before, pulse wave Doppler is limited by its inability to measure high blood flow velocity. Pulse wave Doppler cannot measure high blood flow velocity. It is limited up to about 1.52 meters per second. Anything above that, pulse wave Doppler cannot measure it. Something will occur. If you have high velocities and you try to use your pulse wave Doppler, you get something called aliasing, aliasing. What will happen is, say you're measuring a velocity which is four meters per second. Once you get to your 1.5 to two meters per second, it's gonna cut off and it's gonna put the rest of it below, okay? That's what we call aliasing. So aliasing is represented on the spectral trace as a cutoff of a given velocity. And this is what we're talking about. All right, say for instance, we're measuring AI and we're using pulse wave Doppler. And say the AI total velocity was say four. All right, so this is your pulse wave. This portion is the pulse wave Doppler. When it gets to two, it stops. And then it put the rest of it below, okay? Whereas if you switch to something else, this can measure, this technique or this type of Doppler can measure all, you know, the four meters per second or how, or how much it is, okay? So if you have high velocities, you can't use pulse wave Doppler. Pulse wave Doppler can only measure up to 1.5, two meters per second. You, you have to switch now to what we call continuous wave Doppler continuous wave Doppler, because with high velocities, if you use pulse wave Doppler, you're gonna get aliasing. So continuous wave Doppler is the next Doppler we're gonna talk about.
Continuous wave Doppler measures blood flow velocity along the entire line of interrogation. Okay, the transducer is constantly sending out impulse and constantly listening or receiving impulse. Whereas remember, when we talk about pulse wave Doppler, it sends out an impulse, then it does nothing, it waits for the return signal. Continuous wave does not do that. It continuously sending out impulse and continuously receiving or listen for reflected uh, frequency shift coming back, okay? So because it's doing, it, it's doing this, you can measure high velocities. So it's sending and receiving at all, all times, okay? So you can measure high velocity with your continuous wave Doppler. Mitral regurgitation, so your transducer is right there, apical four chamber view, cursor, sample volume, okay? So we have a flow. So when you put your CW button, you have a flow which is below the baseline. If it's below the baseline, it means that the flow is moving away from the transducer. So the flow is moving from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium. This is what we call mitral regurgitation. The blood is flowing backwards from the left ventricle across the mitral valve into the left atrium. This is opposite to what we normally get. Blood normally flow from the left atrium, across the mitral valve into the left ventricle. But you can get regurgitation where the blood now flows from the left ventricle, across the mitral valve into the left atrium. It's moving away from the transducer, so it's gonna be below the baseline. That's why it's below the baseline. It occurs in systole. Systole is from the onset of the QRS to the end of the T wave. So it's a, it's a systolic flow because in systole, when the left ventricle contracts, if the mitral valve is incompetent, then blood is gonna move backwards, mitral regurgitation. You have to use continuous wave Doppler because mitral regurgitation, the velocity is usually about five meters per second. You can't use PW. Tricuspid regurgitation, similarly. Curse is right there. Short axis at the aortic valve level. Curse is across the tricuspid valve and you're getting this flow above, below the baseline. So therefore you have a flow moving from the right ventricle across the tricuspid valve into the right atrium, tricuspid regurgitation, okay? And it's below the baseline because it's moving away from the transducer. You have to use CW because these velocity, majority of the time, they're greater than two meters per second. So you have to use continuous wave Doppler. Aortic stenosis. If you evaluate in a patient for aortic stenosis, narrowing of the aortic valve, the velocity is gonna be pretty high. So you can't use, you can't use pulse wave Doppler, you have to use continuous wave Doppler. So aortic stenosis is like your garden hose. And if you guys usually, uh, water your lawn or your you know agricultural stuff using a garden hose you can narrow the the the, the garden hose the, the nozzle you can narrow it if you narrow it the velocity is going to be greater and the water will go further so aortic stenosis is similar is similar to that if you have aortic stenosis the aortic valve narrows and the blood have a much greater velocity. You have to use continuous wave Doppler for that, okay? So that is continuous wave Doppler. Now color flow Doppler is the third type of Doppler and color flow Doppler is a type of pulse wave Doppler. Color flow Doppler is a type of pulse wave Doppler, okay? What you do, the returning echoes are displayed assigned colors. 
flow towards the transducer, anything flowing towards the transducer is color coded red. And anything moving away from the transducer is color coded blue or different shades of blue. Okay, so flow towards the transducer are, she, are seen as shades of red. Flow away from the transducer are seen as shades of blue. And then if you have turbulence, you get a mosaic that's a mixture of the colors, many colors. If there's no flow, it's depicted as black. Faster velocities, so if the velocity is very fast, it's displayed as a brighter shade of red or blue. Okay, so again, flow towards the transducer is going to be in shades of red. So we know that blood, in systole blood, flow across the left ventricular flow track, across the aortic valve, and it's going to go, go come up the aorta. So it's actually going towards, somewhat towards the transducer. That's why it looks red. Okay. This is tricuspid regurgitation, okay? Short axis at the level of the aorta. Tricuspid valve is there. Tricuspid regurgitation where blood is moving from the right ventricle across the tricuspid valve into the right atrium. It's actually moving away from the transducer. So it's gonna be in different shades of blue, but because there's turbulence, you get a mixture of the color, mosaic. So when you have turbulence, you know, a mixture of the color, we we'll say it's mosaic. Okay, so if you have aortic insufficiency, transducer is right there, aortic valve. With aortic insufficiency, blood is moving backwards from the aorta across the aortic valve into the left ventricle, or left ventricle flow tract and into the left ventricle. It's actually moving away from the transducer. So you'll get, you know, it will look sort of blue, but again, if it's high flow, you'll get a mixture of color, but it's gonna be mainly blue because it's moving away from the transducer. Okay. So we're gonna do some more Doppler um, in, in the coming weeks, but essentially that's Doppler in a nutshell. So you guys need to go over it, try and understand it as, 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 as best as you can.